Your Royal Highness, Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be here at the Forum today. Some of you may remember my last presentation at this event in 2016 about the opportunities for change in the equine sector as a result of a new EU animal health law. I'm here again today to talk about change of a different kind, EU exit and what it means for owners and people working with equines. It's been my privilege since the EU referendum in June 2016 to have been leading work to enable the continued movement of equines of all kinds from the UK to the EU. I've been delighted to work alongside a number of you to make sure we're ready on the day the UK leaves the EU. The British Horse Council, the Thoroughbred Breeders Association, the British Equestrian Federation, Weatherby's, the British Horse Racing Authority, the British Equine Veterinary Association, representatives from the equine transport sector and from a wide range of equine breed societies. It's been a true government industry partnership and I extend my thanks to all who've worked tirelessly to find solutions, ensuring the UK equine sector is prepared for EU exit. So what does it mean for you? If you own equines but don't move them to the EU, then the rules by which you currently abide are not changing. You'll still apply for your equine passport from an e a passport issuing office, and you'll need no additional paperwork to stable or move your equines around the UK. If, however, you're involved in moving equines to the EU, you need to be aware of changes which may be necessary if the e UK leaves the EU without a deal. We've published details of these changes on gov.uk, and are updating this regularly. So please keep checking back for the latest information. I know from the number of website hits we're receiving that many of you are already doing this. On exit day, the UK will become what is known as a third country. We've made an application to the EU for the UK to be listed for equine movements and we await a formal response. If listing is granted, the UK will be assigned a sanitary category according to our country's equine health status. We believe on scientific grounds this should be put us into the top category, A. We have, however, put contingency plans in place should we be assigned a lower category. This category is important because it defines the specific blood tests and documentation you'll need to move your equines to the EU. We've done everything we can to secure listing, but I need to be very clear about one thing. If the UK is not granted listing status, we will automatically become what is known as an unlisted third country. In this event, no movement of equines from the UK to the EU would be able to take place. Yes, that's right, no movements at all. Clearly, this scenario is not in the interests of the UK or the EU, and we continue to work hard to secure listing. So what exactly will you need to do differently to move your equines to the EU? In summary, you need to make sure all equines being moved from the UK to the EU are tested for the absence of certain diseases within 30 days or less of travelling. You need to meet certain residency and isolation requirements have the right documentation for travel, which will be an export health certificate and in some cases a government-issued ID document. You'll need to enter the EU via a border inspection post. I'm sure you're wondering how much all of this is going to cost. We won't be charging for export health certificates or the ID document if needed, but the testing requirements and the veterinary time needed to prepare an equine for travel are likely to result in additional costs for owners. Exact costs will vary between veterinary practices. So what blood tests will you need? Without knowing which sanitary category the UK will be assigned, I can't be definitive about this today. I can, however, advise you, if you need to move your equines soon after the 29th of March, to consider testing for both A and B sanitary group diseases as a contingency. The details of these tests are provided on gov.uk. But in summary, Group A tests require EIA and, where appropriate, EVA. Additional Group B tests are glanders and, in some cases, Doreen. 
Tests must be completed within a certain number of days of travel, dependent on the type of move being undertaken. And the UK Sanitary Group, so check gov.uk for details if your equine moves regularly between the UK and the EU. You may not need every test for every move. My advice is to consult your vet at least six weeks before you intend to move your equine to the EU to allow sufficient time to prepare. So what does the isolation requirement mean? Look carefully at these to determine what applies to the type of move your equine is undertaking. Equines being permanently exported to the EU need to be kept apart from equines not of equivalent health status for 30 days before export. If the UK is placed in category B, this needs to be under veterinary supervision. These requirements don't apply for temporary export of a registered horse for less than 90 days. I want to be clear about the circumstances in which you'll need a government ID document in addition to your equine passport. We've notified the EU that we wish all our equine breed societies to be approved once we leave. Provided the EU recognises the UK stud books, registered equines will not need a government-issued ID document to travel. This will, however, be needed for movement of unregistered equines, of which proportionately there are a much smaller number each year. You can apply for your government-issued ID from APHA or DERA in Northern Ireland at the same time as your export health certificate. Details of this process are on gov.uk. What else do you need to be thinking about when you want to move your equine to the EU? You need to pass through a border inspection post approved for equines on entry. This may mean that you need to change your usual journey route. The EU lists all BIPs and the species and products they are approved to handle on its website, so please check regularly for new information. We're aware anecdotally that new BIPs are being put in place at some EU ports. What about customs, tariff and transport? Please consult the HMRC Partnership Pack for information on how a no-deal exit affects any charges associated with the export and associated processes. This pack also provides links to the relevant EU information on these systems and will vary by country. We've received a lot of inquiries about transportation requirements if we leave the EU without a deal. Please check the guidance carefully if you intend to continue transporting equines to the EU. You'll need to appoint a representative within an EU country and apply to their relevant government department to obtain a, a transport authorization, certificate of competent, competence, and a vehicle approval certificate, and present this documentation at the border inspection post in the EU. The EU will no longer recognize authorizations isn't issued in the UK, and you'll also need to obtain a journey log from the country, which is your initial point of entry. You may be wondering what all this means if you want to bring equines into the UK from the U EU. We're not making any changes in principle to our import policy from equines on day one. There'll be some minor documentary and process changes to account for the fact we're putting new import notification systems in place. So please check gov.uk for carefully for details and make sure as an importer you comply with UK customs procedures. You might want to register with HRC for simplified import procedures and consider applying for an ATA carne. I'm sure some of you will be wondering what's happening to the tripartite agreement when the UK leaves the EU. The EU have made it clear that the UK will no longer be party to the TPA if we leave without a deal. This means in a no-deal scenario, all equines moving to the EU will need to meet the same requirements in order to travel. If the UK agrees a deal with the EU, then the process for moving equines to the, UK from, from, the, to the UK, from the UK to the EU, including movements currently made under the TPA, will continue in the same way during any implementation period. As some of you are aware, the racing and sport horse sectors in the UK, France and Ireland have been working closely together with their respective governments on a high health horse proposal, which could, and I underline could, enable horses of sufficiently high health status to move more easily between participating countries. This has yet to be considered in any detail by the EU and would not in any case come into application until April 2021. After all of that, you might be feeling a bit like this. So I'll conclude by sharing a few pictures with you of my cousin's equine family. Here's Kia, 19-year-old, 15.2 hands Connemara cross thoroughbred. She was bought seven years ago to rescue her from the meat trade and is the easiest horse ever. 
Meet Millie, a six-year-old thoroughbred cross, 5.1 hands high, had an unplanned foal at three, came to the local vet in lieu of outstanding bill. The foal, foal didn't survive, but Millie found a super home. She was back last year, but having had kissing spine surgery in October, she's now just coming back into work. Here's Bertie, the horse of a lifetime. He was bought as a foal, 17.3 hands high, Irish draft cross thoroughbred. An ex-eventer turned dressage diva. Sadly lost at 18 and still much missed. And finally, the equines in my life. The lovely donkeys at the Donkey Sanctuary Derbyshire Centre, where I volunteer in my spare time. Your Royal Highness, Lords, Ladies and Gentlemen, thank you very much.